Great morning, everyone. Such a great morning to celebrate a great man with such great people. Thank you for having me. Um, I got some formalities real quick. I, I got to thank the city of Greensboro for um, allowing me this opportunity to pour into you today. Um, this is truly an honor, uh, and I promise you, you'll be filled by the time you leave, and I'm not just talking about the food that you're eating right now. Um, I'd like to thank my beautiful wife for having the vision to see me as the man that I could be and not the man that, that I was. I'd like to thank my AWOL community for, that's right, my AWOL community for believing in the teachings and philosophies that become the cornerstone of this brand and community. Thank you, AWOL. Um, I also like to thank the people that cover me spiritually on a daily basis. I got uh, Bishop Pierce, First Lady, uh, Deb back there, y'all, yeah, they here. Um, Pastor Dion Clark and Pastor Odell. I like to, I, thank you guys. I like to thank my family for traveling all the way from New Jersey and Delaware to support me. Special thank you to my beautiful mother for the love that was never vacillating. Her love has never wavered for her children. And I know as many of you are mothers yourselves, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, to my special guest, Congressman Mark Walker. My latest book, um, Prison of Prosperity, it was an inspiration to Congressman Walker as he entitled new legislation behind the title of my book, Prison to Prosperity. Thank you for joining us today. So every year we come together to celebrate and reflect on one of America's most powerful and motivating civil rights leaders of all times, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. See, some of us go out on this day and perform some civic or moral duty in honor of Dr. King, and it makes us feel empowered. But have you ever asked yourself what makes you feel empowered on this day? Is it the things that we do that make us feel empowered? If you're feeling empowered just a little bit right now from some of the stuff that you heard thus far, just throw your hand up and wave it at me real quick. Good. Now I want you to savor that feeling for a moment. Then I want you to ask yourself, how can I feel this feeling every day? Why don't I feel this feeling every day? And what if I could actually feel this feeling every day? See, in order for you to feel this feeling every day, you're gonna have to become the dream. I'm gonna say that one more time. You're gonna have to become the dream. I'm gonna need everybody to repeat after me real quick. Say, I am the dream. I said, say, I am the dream. The dream wasn't just Dr. Martin Luther King's. The dream is yours. Now I'm gonna say that one more time. I'm gonna need to sink in. The dream was not just Dr. Martin Luther King's, the dream was yours. So I'm here today to tell you what it takes to become the dream and to live the dream every day. And if you're wondering why or how I'm qualified to do that, it's simple. I've become the dream. I've become the dream so it allows me to live the dream, which means I am the dream. Repeat after me. I am the dream. Good. When it's all said and done, you're going to know that you're the dream too. See, what I'm going to do is root you in the reality of the possibility of living the dream, of becoming the dream, of being the dream. 
See, when I was growing up, I got to tell my story real quick. So those of you who know me and you've heard this story countless times, I need you to bear with me for about six minutes. Is that cool? All right. See, when I was growing up, I was about nine years old. And my, sorry, mom, my circumstances weren't always the most favorable. And my mom used to send me to the store with a note. And on my way to the store with a note, sometimes I'd open it up. And one day I opened the note up, and the note said, can we have a pound of bologna, a dollar's worth of cheese, and a loaf of bread till Friday? Some of y'all know about them notes. I began to think, if my mom worked two jobs, why do we have to ask for food till Friday? At that point, I began to dream. I began to dream of never working for anyone in my life. I began to make money, raking leaves, shoveling snow, delivering papers, cutting hair, washing sneakers, doing anything and everything that I could do to keep some money in my pocket. But I had no idea that the purpose of this dream was rooted in entrepreneurship. See, since my mom worked two jobs, we were always enrolled in some type of sports program. Football one season, the next season basketball, the next season baseball. And it rolled right over to the next year. And I dreamed of playing all these sports on the next level. I didn't have the most talent, so I had to develop a work ethic that allowed me to compete right alongside the most talented. See, the lack of talent led me to the work ethic. And the work ethic led me to discipline, and the discipline led me to becoming. I became the example. I became the captain of all my sports teams, even all throughout high school. I had no idea that the purpose of this dream was rooted in leadership. You see, when you misunderstand the purpose of something, it will be abused. I need y'all to jot that down real quick. I said, when you misunderstand the purpose of something, it will be abused. Let me give you a couple examples. See, a lot of us don't understand the purpose of money, so we abuse it. I'm here today to... Uh, shake your perspective. All right? So you're going to catch a couple of these. You hear what I said? A lot of us don't understand the purpose of our body, so we abuse it. A lot of us don't understand the purpose of marriage, so we abuse it. But since I ain't here for that and they only gave me 30 minutes, I'm going to get back to dreaming. <laughs> See, when you start dreaming, it's going to begin to work inside you that you can't, you can't suppress. And when the work in you can't be suppressed, that work will spill over outside of you into everything that you do. See, Dr. King once said, if you can't be a pine on the top of the hill, be a scrub in the valley. But be the best little scrub on the side of the rill. He said, be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. For it isn't by size that you win or you fail. Be the best at whatever you are. See, my dreams used to wake me up every day when I thought I understood the purpose of my dreams. But what I didn't see was, with each level of success, I was becoming more complacent in the very things that got me there. I began to take success for granted. I began to take opportunity for granted. I began to take preparation for granted. Some of us have reached a level of success and we're starting to take things for granted. Like the dream. Let that sink in real quick. <laughs> in doing so, look, I slept my way right out of college into the school of hard knocks. See, when I was in college, I started to wake up late for class. Then I started to miss class. Once I missed too many classes, I started to fail my classes, so I dropped my classes. I dropped so many classes that I was no longer a full-time student, then I was denied housing. After I was kicked out of college and forced to go back to the hood, back into a negative environment with negative associations, there's only a few ways in that negative environment that people have to survive. I dropped one rock and picked up another. At that point, I stopped dreaming. I plead with all of you today to never stop dreaming. Langston Hughes once wrote, what happens to a dream deferred? But Dr. King once answered, 
it leads to bewildering frustration and corroding bitterness. See, I was frustrated and bitter once I stopped dreaming. I was distracted and discouraged because the only success I saw were drug dealers with the big cars, big jewelry, the flyest clothes, and the flyest girls. And that became appealing. When I stopped dreaming, other people's things became appealing. See, I was presented with an opportunity, and I was on my way to becoming the best of the bad guys. Remember when I said if you don't understand the purpose of something that you'll abuse it? Well, I abused my influence and I abused my entrepreneurial skills and I became the leader of an $8.3 million drug ring. A federal indictment came down on me and my team and I had to spend 10 years in federal prison. It was at that very point when I said to myself, this is not me, this is not who I was meant to be, and this is not how you'll remember me. It was at my darkest moment that I began to dream again. See, Dr. King once said, only when it's dark enough can you see the stars. At that dark moment, I crafted a letter to the judge and to everyone at my sentencing of how I would use my time. I would use my time to give myself the best opportunity at my chance at redemption. I now had a dream. I had a dream that I would take this challenge and adversity and use it to my advantage because Dr. King once said, the measure of a man is not where he stands in times of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. I said I had a dream. I would use this time to prepare, to become, to become what it was that I dreamed to be by seeking one thing, knowledge. See, by seeking knowledge, I became the light. I became the light in a dark place during a dark time. Because Dr. King said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Y'all not missing it. I'm living the dream. Look, I had a dream that I would do what was necessary to become the dream. I began to see it. That means visualize it. I began to say it. That means affirm it. I begin to write it. That means set goals. And I begin to work it. That means execute the strategies, tactics, and processes needed to fulfill the dream. See, I began to learn, study, practice, and master human behavior, psychology, self-help, personal development, spirituality, health and wellness, body language, whatever subject that was connected to enhancing my overall growth and development because I had a dream. See, upon my release, I became fully committed to living the dream. Though I was starting a new life with a new wife at 37 years old in a new city, only making $6 for 30 minutes, I still had a dream. And as the leader of an $8.3 million drug ring, $6 for 30 minutes... <laughs> Might not cut it, but I took my time to become someone else. I was no longer him because I had a dream. See, I could hear the words of Dr. King when I had that $6 for 30-minute job. And you know what he said? He said, if you can't fly, then run. He said, if you can't run, then walk. He said, if you can't walk, then crawl. But by all means, keep moving. I just needed to start where I was with what I had to make something happen, and I began to build a brand with name and face recognition. I started to make things happen by building value. Look, and as AWOL continued to add more value, the brand began to become significant. See, success is when I add value to myself. And a lot of us here are successful. But significance is when I add value to others. Once I started adding value to others, I realized I had a calling and not a career. Somebody said, I had a dream. See, Dr. King once said, we're all caught 
and an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. What affects one directly affects all indirectly. For some strange reason, I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. And you can never be what you ought to be until I am what I ought to be. Somebody say, I am the dream. See, I had to tell my story because, look, a lot of y'all don't know me. So the ones that do know me, y'all like, why is he reading? (laughs) I don't normally do this. But I'm here today to expound on why we are not living the dream. See, we're not living the dream because we don't have enough courage. When I say courage, I mean the word courage comes from a Latin word, core. The core means the heart. And we're not living the dream because it's not in our heart. And when I'm talking about the heart, I don't mean this thing that pumps blood throughout your body. I'm talking about the heart of hearts. I'm talking about the seed of the soul. See, the dream is not in the seed of the soul. The seed of the soul is the mind the will, and the emotions. I'm going to need you to get a dream and put it into your mind. Put it into your will and put it into your emotions. See, what I did was when I was in prison was I took the dream and I embedded it into my mind. I realized that through human behavior and cognitive behavioral change that I had to deprogram and reprogram my subconscious mind. And I realized that in order to do that, I had to change my environment and associations and my thoughts, feelings, and emotions. See, your subconscious mind is responsible for 95% of your reality. And if you don't program it, someone else will. See, we get commercials that come across TV, and it's called subliminal advertisement. These people are well-versed in cognitive behavioral change. So all of a sudden, you get an inkling for pizza, and you order it. See, what you don't realize is that the brain is operating on 9.5 to 10.5 wave cycles per second when you first wake up in the morning and before you go to sleep at night. That is the frequency that you need to produce spontaneous mental imagery inside your mind. The mind only works in pictures. If you can change the picture in your mind, then you can change the programming in your mind. If you can change the programming in your mind, you can change what comes about. See, I realized this when I was where? When I was in darkness. But I need you to realize that what I did in darkness wasn't for me. What I did when I was in darkness was for everyone else that would benefit from my becoming. Somebody say, I am the dream. See, in programming your subconscious mind, it will dictate what your conscious mind does. Have you ever driven your car somewhere and you start texting or you're thinking about something else and all of a sudden you end up at that Destination. I know you're not supposed to text while you're driving, but I know you do. (laughs) Your subconscious mind took care of that. Your subconscious mind takes care of you brushing your teeth. Your subconscious mind takes care of you uh, tying your shoes. There's a lot of different things throughout the day that's on automatic programming from your subconscious mind. But what if you took whatever you wanted and plugged it in there. That's called auto-suggestion for all my psychological study people out there. I don't even know the name of it, but. (laughs) Auto-suggestion is when you take a thought, or when you take a dream, when you take a goal, when you take a desire, and you plug it in to your mind, not someone else's. What about your will? What if you controlled your will? What is your will? Your will is your spirit. See, we're not always going to have the will to do something. 
But what if you conditioned your will to be stronger? I know some of you are like, how do I do that? I'm here to tell you that when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you do will determine if the spirit gets the victory or the flesh gets the victory. See, there's a scripture that says the flesh has to die daily. Now, what I didn't tell you was what led me to prison was ultimately me asking my mother for 10 more minutes of sleep. See, every day I used to condition myself to hit the snooze button by asking my mom for 10 more minutes of sleep. And I conditioned a behavior that when I got into college, I still needed someone to wake me up, but nobody was there to wake me up. So I fell out of school. But when I wake up today, there is no snooze button. I wake up today at 2.45 a.m. No snooze button. See, I wake up today because I'm trying to catch a dream. I have no time to snooze. See, the average American wakes up between 5.30 and 7.30. And I wake up at 2.45. I get a three-hour head start on the average American every single day. So for a whole work week, I gain 20 hours. And for two weeks, I'll gain a whole work week on the average American. But that's the reason why I'm the resident fitness expert at WFNY News 2. Tracy McCain. No, just think about it. Some of us have gotten our positions. We've gotten our titles. We've gotten our careers. And we forgot about the preparation. We forgot about becoming. We forgot about what got us there. And a little old guy like me that just came home from prison now has the spot that other people in the same field of health and wellness, those that went to school for four, six, eight years, and owe $100,000 and I had a dream. See, there's a dream that fuels me to let the spirit get the victory. So when I wake up in the morning, I give the glory to God. When I wake up in the morning, I, I say my affirmations because I know that I can program my subconscious mind at that time. When I wake up in the morning, I say today is the most magnificent day of my life. Health, wealth, hap happiness and love, success, prosperity and money come to me in great abundance. See, when I wake up in the morning, I say amazing opportunities exist for me in every aspect of my life. Wouldn't you say this is an amazing opportunity? See, I've trained my brain to execute my vision. I talked about emotions as the third point. And when I talked about the emotions, I simply said, we don't feel like doing it. There's going to be days that we don't feel like doing it, but when you have the right strategies, tactics, and processes in place, you can use motion to change your emotion. Sometimes all you got to do is get going. If you have a system that gives you a small accomplishment, you will get confidence. If you get confidence, you will have empowerment. And once you have how empowerment you will be able to tap in to an infinite amount of potential energy some of us don't feel like doing it and where I got systems in place I'm becoming a dream somebody say I am the dream we're not living a dream because we're not acting. See, when we don't feel like it, we don't act. I'm here today to tell you that action changes things. A, C, T. Some of y'all ain't taking notes, but you in the service right now, I'm letting you know. I dropped 99 jewels and then some of y'all ain't getting none. 
I said we're not living a dream because we're not taking action. And then I broke the word act down to action changes things. See, sometimes you got to take massive action. And when I'm talking about massive action, it means the fact that you can wake up at 2.45 in the morning and not be tired. See, massive action is borderline insane. Until the rest of the world sees the fruits of your labor. They're going to ask you how you did it. You're going to say 245, and they're going to say, I, I don't want that drink. <laughs> Sometimes you got to take imperfect action. A lot of us out here want everything to be perfect before we move. But how many of y'all heard me when I said, you got to start where you are with what you got and make something happen? See, I built a community off of uh, what the Rush and Gold's Gym didn't even, they didn't even market to. I changed the way that fitness is approached for years to come because nobody would think like I think. I said, today I'm here to change your perspective. I do not want you to think like the majority. Our lives change when we were the minority. No, I, I'm going to say that again. Our lives change when we, were not, when we were the minority, but since we've become the majority, we stopped dreaming. We got some houses, we got some cars, we got some careers, and we forgot that the dream was passed down to us. But how, look, how will the younger generation ever be able to carry on the legacy of the dream if we are not living the dream. The more we live the dream, the more we bridge the gap. But the problem is, once some of us got to the other side, we said, we don't want to go back. I said, I am the dream. Dr. Martin Luther King had a dream, and his dream did not stop and should not stop in 1963. Let me get more than one clap on that. Really quick, I'm going to teach you all how to tap into your dream. In order for you to tap into your dream, you're gonna to have to start trying to find your gift. Your gift is the thing that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort. I'm gonna say it again. Your gift is the thing that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort. If you start operating in your gift, the creator will make room for more. See, See I wasn't destined to just be a fitness instructor, but I was faithful over few. And with the fitness came the speaking. With the speaking came becoming a writer. And becoming a writer allowed me to be introduced to people like Mark Walker and Congressman Hardister and the judges and the chief of police and the captains and the city managers. But I'm always faithful over the gift. And since I had a work ethic and discipline I was able to become good, a good steward over those gifts. And every, every time, look, I cultivate a new gift, it's just me digging down to find some of the more seeds that he placed inside of me. See, he placed a seed inside of all of us, but we won't dig. We won't dig because we're looking outside of us at everybody else's dream. Now I gotta wrap this up, but before I leave, I need everybody to repeat after me. I am, I am the dream. dream. I said, I am, I am the, dream. the dream. Thank you for having me, y'all.